but you might not have the right nerve cells in your rectum. Then you have a fancy name, Hirschsprung's disease. That needs surgery. Today, we usually operate in one stage. We can use minimally invasive techniques. Baby hardly has a scar. Well, let, 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 now, you say Hirschsprung's disease. That means there's a bowel, but you said nerves. I mean, the electrical system is sort of like missing? Yeah, because uh, the uh, bowels are like the heart. They uh, don't just have a wall, but they have a, 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 a muscle system and nerves that propel. And in Hirschsprung's disease, you don't have those nerves down in the rectum that would push things out. So the bowels act blocked. They're Does there. it involve a little area or a big area yeah, or a so variation? It usually involves a little area, and it can involve a big area. And that one, you have to remove the bowel that has... Obviously, an electrical system can make it work. Is that and correct? And, uh, and the surgeon does some fancy reconstruction. You really need a pediatric surgeon who knows how to get the bowel with nerve cells down to replace that rectum that has no nerve cells. And also that for years afterwards, you'd be careful because sometimes it, it could be a little bit of constipation problems and things like that that happen afterwards. That kind of baby needs lifelong follow-up with the pediatric surgeon and in, in cahoots with the pediatrician. The life-threatening part of that disease is called enterocolitis. And that can happen after the surgery where the baby gets very listless, looks like they're in shock, uh, maybe has some diarrhea, and that baby needs emergency treatment with... Uh, gastric tube, fluid by vein, antibiotics, washing out of the bowels. So that's not a common thing. Enterocolitis happens in 15-20%. Happens, 20%. But, it, but when we do the surgery and it's followed carefully, we minimize that risk to some degree. That's true. So you have to follow it very carefully. That's true. So I'm going to hold to my ground that the thing that parents and pediatricians need to know about Hirschsprung's is there is that lifelong risk, and they have to know the early warning signs. So basically, good education, good follow-up always is the best thing to do.